Welcome to day 478 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. Remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DSOFI. So Brian, what's the latest crypto news? Yeah, so yesterday, Sam Bankman-Fried made an interesting post. Uh, for those who don't know, Sam Bankman-Fried is a major influencer within the crypto space. He's a CEO of FTX, uh, but he wrote a long thread about the future of crypto. And he, he said that, that there's three potential use cases for crypto as we move forward. And the post read, for the sake of this thread, I'm going to ignore uses like you can buy tokens and maybe they'll go up. So the three that he listed were A, payments, B, market structure, and C, social media, which is obviously interesting to us since we talk about DSO all the time. Uh, later in the thread, uh, he gave a really good example of how social media and blockchain can interact. And he did it in a way that I think we do a lot in the way we explain it a lot. And this is an example. He said, so if you use, block if you use blockchain Twitter, you type the message into blockchain Twitter's interface. You, blockchain Twitter then posts that message on a public blockchain. Your friends pull out blockchain Facebook. Blockchain Facebook reads your message and displays it. So he's basically saying that, that different nodes, blockchain Twitter, blockchain Facebook, they can push and pull information to this blockchain and a post on blockchain Twitter can be viewed on a viewed on blockchain facebook and vice versa uh natter actually saw this and he replied he said it's amazing to see sam bank and freed extolling the virtues of DSO protocol it really feels like decentralized social is what's next and DSO is still the only blockchain that can power storage heavy infinite state apps like social how long before the rest of the market catches on so that was really interesting yeah i, I mean he didn't actually mentioned DSO by name, but everything he was talking about is essentially what DSO is doing. Yeah. And, and like, like Nader said, there really isn't anything else with the capabilities of DSO right now. Will there be in the future? I'm sure there's going to be other blockchains that try to mimic what DSO is doing, but I feel DSO has a really strong foot in the door, uh, a, a big lead on the competition. So I think once the, the crypto community, as well as just a traditional web two community figure out the power of what a blockchain driven social media protocol could have. I think that DSO could definitely pick up in steam. Uh, of course, we're in a crypto winter right now. So things are not all that uh, optimistic, but I think once we move out of this crypto winter, things will change. I think it's always good to have these people who are viewed as icons within the space, people with an intense amount of knowledge of the space, talk positively about aspects of what DSO is doing, whether, I mean, they might not be mentioning DSO by name, they might not even be aware of DSO, but the mindset is that this is the future of social media and this is that direction where social media ultimately needs to go. And DSO is gonna be out in front once everybody starts realizing this, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and talking about crypto winter, Something that strays from the crypto winter in the last few days has been Ethereum. Ethereum's up 35 to 40% over the last four days, which is incredible. And this is coming ahead of the network's highly anticipated merge upgrade. Uh, the merge upgrade promises to transform uh, Ethereum from a proof of work protocol to a proof of stake protocol, making it more efficient, less energy intensive. And I, I think that as we move closer to the merge, excitement's picking up. And just a few days ago, I think on July 14th, we got a little bit more information, a little bit more clarity on when the merge is actually going to take place. So right now, it appears that if everything goes as planned, this merge update will take place around September 19th. So we're about two months out, uh, give or take a few days. And people are starting to get excited. Now, Ethereum broke out of this descending triangle. Uh, it's a chart pattern yesterday. And typically that means that it could keep going and going higher. Uh, but a lot of traders aren't buying into this breakout. 
uh, just because it it jumps so much after such a such a long drop and the crypto space in general is still in this uh, winter atmosphere. So we'll see. Will it stay stay above above this triangle or will it drop back down and fall back into the old pattern? I don't know. I, I think it it definitely rose quite quickly, uh, but we'll see, I guess. Yeah, and I think a lot of it depends on Bitcoin as well. Even Ethereum, I think, you know, if, if Bitcoin continues to fall, it's going to be hard for Ethereum to actually keep going up. It's just not going to happen. So I think a lot of it depends on what happens with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's looking pretty interesting on the charts as well. If you look at the uh, weekly charts, uh, the candle, the chart of weekly candles, we we're kind of seeing a potential breakout above the downward trend line at least a trend line that starts at around march 27th or so it it's very close it's it's going to depend on where this week's candle closes out later today uh but that's going to be interesting to follow you know i don't know how much you can read into technicals when you're talking about crypto especially in a market like this i think a lot of it's more fundamental type things and market sediment rather than what the charts are doing but Sometimes you can. Sometimes I think the charts do play a role in helping maintain certain prices or helping helping a crypto break out out of a downtrend. Yeah, I, I think the next few weeks uh, will be crucial. I think to see see what these trends do. Will will we continue to see things rise to maybe new monthly highs, or will we see things drop back into the downtrend that we've been watching the last few months? Yeah, so moving on, uh, we've been talking a lot about GD Virtual Galleries and specifically about a virtual gallery that was released for DSO OG Michelle Lord. And GDS actually, Gabriel actually has some stats for us to show the 24-hour period after the launch of Michelle Lord's GD Virtual Gallery. Uh, it was, it's pretty interesting. The average person visiting the gallery, Michelle Lord's gallery, stayed there for six minutes and five seconds. So that's a nice retention rate. I guess you could say, I don't know if I want to say retention rate, but nice amount of time that some people are spending in the gallery. I checked it out as well. I probably stayed for, I'd say probably about six or seven minutes myself. Uh, there were 174 total views of the gallery. 70 plus were using mobile type devices and 22 users went to Michelle Lord's NFTZ page and I, I think that's actually why Michelle Lord's photography by Michelle NFTs are ranked so high on NFTZ's most viewed NFTs in the last several days probably mostly because of the virtual gallery uh, not not to say that the photography and artwork isn't phenomenal because it is yeah, I, I, I love these. I, I just spent like I probably five to ten minutes just viewing the NFTs because there's just so there's so many fine details within each piece. And uh GDS, of course, doing amazing things not only for uh DSO, but for many of these artists like Michelle who are who are minting on DSO. Yeah, so at one PM Pacific time, four PM Eastern time today, there's a big NFT drop. It's a collab between Effed Up Cats and Priyana Check's Mice Heads. And they're called Effed Up Mice. Uh, at, again, at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, the drop's going to take place. It's going to be an NFT auction. Definitely check that out. Both of these artists are phenomenal, creating great NFTs on the DSO blockchain. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see. Let's I see wonder if the mice are, are the mice going to have their heads trapped in mouse traps? Is that how they're going to be effed up? I don't know. I think it's going to be something like that, but I'm not sure. Got to wait and see. So moving on, the user Atharva310, this appears to be a new user, is building some sort of app that appears to be on DSO. He made several posts showing photos and then showing a photo with these stickers that he also posted overlaid on top of the photo. So it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of what Story is doing. I don't know if they're doing something similar or not. It's really hard to tell. But even Natter replied to one of the posts and said, looks great. Uh, what do we wait and see? I'm looking forward to see, is this going to be a DSO app? Is it going to be similar to story? Is it going to be something completely unique that we haven't thought of yet? Maybe. We're just going to wait and see. We haven't seen many new developers jump into DSO and start building. So I, I think anything that we see coming from new developers uh, that can get the community excited is, is big. 
uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what it's going to be. And hopefully we see more of this. I hope, I hope we see more developers coming on board and, and building, building things that DSO users can love. And, and I made a post earlier. I, I think that, that you can't be building on DSO expecting DSO to kind of push your app or your project forward. You should be building on DSO to try and lure other people onto DSO to use your app. And, and I, I think a lot of the successful projects, that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, you're not going to be successful by just relying on creating an app and having a DSO community join. You're going to have to bring people outside of DSO onto your app. And but in, invest in digital... Investing in Digital did reply to that post I made this morning, and he said it, it can actually be both. Uh, they're going, they're actually trying to help developers uh, moving forward, uh, kind of help them promote what they're working on. So, I, I mean, I, I think that as a developer, you can't have the mindset that you're going to rely on DSO, but DSO is going to help you out, and they do have a plan for that. Yeah, that that is a good point. I, I also want to thank Clout Women, I mean Global Women. Uh, for pointing out a list of female DSO accounts that's currently being created by Masha Lin. Uh, it's, I think there's 108 or so accounts on there so far. They don't have every woman, woman on, on DSO listed, but if you want to get at it, I'm sure you can contact Masha Lin and she'll add you. Uh, I included a link to the document. It's a Google spreadsheet above this video. So definitely check it out and see if you're on the list. Yeah, for sure. And I just want to... Before we get on to the top list today, I want to wish Goldberry well. Uh, of course, Goldberry is a DSO OG user. She's recovering from COVID. She said it's not too bad. She didn't get a really bad case of it, but she is recovering. She's still not feeling well. Best wishes to Goldberry. Get well soon, Goldberry. Uh, so quickly, the top 10 most NFT bids by user over the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ, uh, the usernames are random name two. Random name three, Ash Shine, Rhubarb, Manic, Studio Richards, Meta Philosopher, nice to always see him up there, Visual Golia, NFT Pets, and hold on, I gotta do the pronunciation here. Uh, where where is my pronunciation? <laughs> Where's my pronunciation when I need it? Chermislav Digdom. Uh, I always have trouble pron pronouncing that name. Uh, so the most viewed NFT, as Eddie said, uh, over the last 24 hours is still photography by Ms. Michelle. Uh, the mask is the most viewed. It's been three days in a row that this one has been the top viewed NFT on NFTZ. Congrats, Michelle Lord. And uh, definitely need to check this one out. Yeah, uh, congratulations. She's continuing to remain at the top of the list. I think her virtual gallery is playing a huge role in that. Uh, after Michelle Lure, there's a couple other interesting NFTs that are the most viewed. There's one of the mice heads, uh, mice head number 12, which is a really cool NFT. That's second place is when it comes to views, followed by another mannequin by Michelle Lord, photography by Michelle. And, but then it's followed by our very, the Krasenstein NFT. It's a very first art slash non-text NFT minted on Diesel blockchain. That's number four in the list. Uh, it's it's owned by Creator Fund Micro Two, which is Mario Nalfall, uh, who I actually just talked to this morning. I had a nice conversation with him this morning, uh, and he may be putting up for auction. I'm not sure. Uh, I told him he should because there's some demand out there for it, but we'll see if he does or not. Yeah, so it's it's entitled "The Dawn of NFTs on BitCloud," and it's funny because we we had this NFT created, and we were like, okay, the first day NFTs appear on on BitCloud at the time, it wasn't these so. We're gonna mint this, and it's a really cool animated image that we had made featuring the BitClout logo. But we luckily became the first art piece ever minted on the DSO blockchain. I think it was Diamond Heads, then Tyne, then May Beam who minted NFTs before us, and they were all just BitClout posts that they turned into NFTs, which I'm I'm sure have a significant amount of value, especially the very first. I think it was by Diamond Heads or Tyne. I think Diamond Heads it doesn't exist anymore. So I think Tom Diamond Hands. Has. Are you saying Diamond Heads? I did say that, didn't I? Diamond Hands. Diamond but Hands. This is the first art piece, and I think it's just a great piece of DSO history, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I don't know why you kept saying Diamond Heads like, I don't repeatedly. Know that was really so, weird. So Unicat also had one of the top viewed NFTs in the last 24 hours. Just wanted to say that. 
Yeah, so getting onto the top diamond creators over the last 24 hours, according to Outcome Base, Rhubarb was number one, followed by Barbie Graveyard, Quanti, Mike, Michael Webb, Anon Voice, Diamond VC, X Rabbit, Happy Rabbit, Krasenstein, and Gabby. So we were almost pushed off of the top 10. And like I said before, I welcome that because it means that the DSO communities uh, engaging with a lot of people other than just us. Uh, but uh, congrats to all those users. Yeah, congratulations. And that's all the news we have for today. Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. And we will talk to you tomorrow.